Hello, welcome to Virtual Fiber Festival. I'm Christy of the Straw Family Farm and most of you know us um, as I have the little boy with me, um, RJ. Well, that little boy is now 24 years old and um, last year we didn't vend at Fiber Festival just for the fact that he made the ACRE finals. And again, this year I wasn't gonna be able to vend because he's at the finals rodeo and, and I don't put on the booth myself by myself so um yeah it's a lot but i've always been there to teach since we started coming and we've always done a presentation so this year is not going to be any different okay virtual otherwise canceled this is still going to be online so um i guess we're going to jump right to it well let me do a little introduction for those of you who don't know because this is virtual so it might have people who don't know us or don't know who we are or what we do um the straw family farm started out as a fiber farm um and my son has now taken it and it was due to him that we started a fiber farm and then um he's taken it in the horse training direction so I still have a fiber journey. I love to spin. I crochet. I do Tunisian classes, which I won't be able to do two presentations this year just because. But my Tunisian classes are still online if you go to our webpage. Okay, so you can get the basics of the, the stitches and it's very plain and all that stuff. So um, if you're interested in Tunisian, pop over to the website, check those out. They're free for the viewing. Okay, so um, anyway. Uh, what am I working on? Those of you who know me know that I drop spindle, I spin, I shear and process our own wool and all that good stuff. Um, my big project right now I've got sitting behind me. I am working on a crochet sampler blanket. I have all the, the squares done and blocked and now I'm attaching them and I have two rows done. I have a third row put together but I haven't attached it to the main blanket. So um, it's just something I was doing fun through the winter and hopefully I'll have that done pretty soon <laughs> um, I'm, I've actually been working on it pretty steady so uh, let's see what else I have some fiber on my wheel and I don't know if this is gonna show up but everybody knows I always travel with my Kiwi this is the one that I give lessons on upstairs at the fiber festival I always have it with me and this is a little bit of mohair that I have on it um, so, and it is drum carter for those of you who I ran it through the drum carter was cheating, but yeah. So that's me. I think that's really all I've been working on right now. I have two skeins of yarn that I did up. One was Ruth's Pygora from last year's Fiber Festival. And one was some really soft Merino that I found um, at Get Stitching in Tulsa. And I spun both those up and I'm making myself something. That is my myself project. Um, yeah, that is for a friend. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I do do a lot, but I very rarely keep any. So it was kind of a do something for yourself challenge. I still have those two skeins. I've got about 450 yards of uh, the two together. I think I'm going to do a wrap. I don't know. I haven't finished it. Yes, it was a it's a year old goal. I started it last year. If you took um, and I worked with you on any spinning or anything like that, you know I was spinning those at Fiber Festival last year. So a um, lot going on. So I can't fault that. But I haven't found a pattern I like. I kind of know what I want. I may just wing it and do it myself. But anyway, that's all I have working on. So now you've kind of caught up. If you're old school and been to the Fiber Festival. That's what I got going on so far. That's where RJ is. What else do I talk about at Fiber Festival? Um, drop spindling. I help people with that, but not really. I mean, you can drop spindle anything. So, uh, okay. So I think that's kind of the little catch up intro thing. Remember, I'm Christy from the Straw Family Farm, and I have done a fiber processing presentation that breaks all the rules. Um, in the fiber world, if you've ever been around, they say, oh, well, this is what you're supposed to do, but there's really no rules. But then everybody follows the norm, okay? So the other thing that I hear a lot 
is how expensive fiber is as a hobby. Guys, it's not meant to be. I want you to think back. I want you to think about the older generation, how they sat outside with their wheels and they sat with this big bag on their lap and some may have a comb, may, some of them didn't, you know. And when I say a comb, I mean they used to have just one of these because they were expensive, okay? So this is this is the one my grandma used. Um, it's older. It's probably, oh, I don't know, uh, 40s or 50s. It's not like 1800s old. Um, many of you know that I have an 1874 or 1847 uh, walking wheel and it's too big to get into the shot right over there is my little traditional ashford traditional spinning wheel and it's from 63 or 64 i don't know it's my grandma's so and then i have this one here um that i have so you would see them with something like this and they would just and then spin And there is my phone. For those of you who don't know, RG does travel a lot and I don't turn off my phones. If you've ever watched any of our other videos, you know that my job also doesn't allow me to. So yeah, sorry about that. Nothing important, we're gonna ignore it. Uh, so think about those people that sat out there. Traditionally, sheep's wool was something that was, sheep herders were looked down on sheep people were the poor people um how did fiber processing and and fiber hobbyists get it to be this big mecca of dollars that it is today well we're not even going to address that we don't care the truth is you can do it inexpensively with your fingers no tools needed other than your drop spindle or a spinning wheel okay now we're going to talk about the ways to, to process fiber okay if i'm doing bulk i'm at my house and the first thing i do is i put it through a tumbler and it's a big machine there's no way that i can you can just google it if you haven't seen them i own a big tumbler and we tumble it and then we go and we wash it and then we i have a huge drying rack that i've built which is also on youtube you can see how it was built um and then i dry it and then I run it through the picker and then I use a drum carter. Now, for those of you who don't know, I do have a little manual drum carter and this is normally what I use. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. The problem with the process, and then of course, after I drum cart it, I spin it and then I dye it. Um, yeah, it's just a long drawn out process, right? No. No, no, no. When I'm spinning, and I actually have customers that request this, and there are pluses and minuses to this, so hold in there and we will show you and tell you all about it, okay? So, the first thing is they wash it, they dry it. Okay, when I talk about my tumbler, it's a big thing and it's hundreds of dollars. Even to build one, it's not cheap. My drying rack, it is a six foot or seven foot rack that goes like this and it's got all these little shelves in them yeah that wasn't cheap to build either okay now it was cheaper than buying one I'm not gonna lie to you but we're talking hundreds of dollars the picker itself can cost upwards you know to five to to seven hundred dollars then the carter itself can cost five to six hundred dollars you know you might find a used one for three or four and think you've got a really good deal um spinning wheels are expensive drop spindles work just as well so um my cheapest drop spindle was 10 bucks so i technically could get started in fiber with 10 bucks in this presentation okay for my drop spindle so if you make your own drop spindle hey it could be even cheaper than that now i have seen the little cds with the dowel rods we make those and they're super cheap. So you could start with one of those and literally have less than $5 in to start in your fiber processing. Yeah, you're going now. That, how, are she, how is she saying it? There's no way, right? Been there, done that. You got all this stuff in there. No, 
It really is that simple. So let's look at some of the ways that most people will tell you. First, if you can't afford a drum carter, they have hand carters. These are still, they can range, if you can get them used, from $45 to $50, on up to $100, $120. Some that are handmade are, uh, I've seen them run about $179.99 at, at places, and that's an actual price. So, I, yeah, these can be expensive. If you have two of these, these can be bought at Orschlin's or tractor supply or any of your farm supplies. They're sheep for doing their legs, you know, and you can use them to cart the wool as well. So these run a little bit cheaper, but again, you're talking 20 to $30 for this. I think this one was, the last time I looked at this kind, it was $29.99. And if you want two of them, you know, that's 60 bucks, guys. Um, now, in another presentation that I have done, you can find little rabbit brushes at your Dollar Tree. This is a dollar one. It's been well loved. I'm going to show you there is actually bristles and stuff missing here. Um, yeah, we have kids that come to the farm and learn this stuff. So you can find these uh, little things at Dollar Tree to use if you really, really, really want to do that. But again, I'm telling you, you don't need any of that. Combs actually look like this. They are hundreds. This is a mini set of combs, and they are hundreds of dollars. Okay, anywhere from 150 on up, depending on what you want to get. Hackles. Um, hackles are expensive. The big ones that you put down. The cost does not have to be there, guys. I'm telling you. I know you look at all these things. And, oh boy, I'm, I'm never gonna get that. You don't need it. Okay, simple fact you don't need it um i have here and i'm going to show you how to do it right now okay so you can go to your local farmer and for those of you who say well we just do meat sheep here okay their wool is just as good as anything else and it spins up amazingly and you can find some because those sheep are fed uh nutritional stuff a lot of their fibers can be really nice now some of them can be bad uh, you know bad but <laughs> a lot of them can be really soft and supple and a lot of places that do meat sheep literally put that wool in a pile and burn it so you can get free wool if you'll just go help them work that day and come on who doesn't want to help shear sheep and you know what i mean so yeah you can get probably a whole fleece now i have um favorite her name is Paige, but she's RJ's favorite. And I already pulled out one so you can see, but it's in a bag and it's really crinkly. So this is her fleece, okay? And I just simply grabbed it from wherever. Didn't even look at what edge I got, if it needed to be skirted. We skirt them before we put them in there, okay? But if you're shearing for, with someone else, they may not skirt them. Uh, so I've got this little piece of wool here. You can see it is actually raw. It stinks, you know, like raw wool. So... I'm going to spin this, right? I'm going to process it. I'm going to get everything out of there. Your best tool is your fingers. I want you to look when it says lining up fibers. I'm just grabbing this and pulling. Um, this is now spinnable fiber. Okay. So you can see all the vegetation has fallen. And yes, she has vegetation in her. We don't jacket our things. You just, you've seen demonstrations where they spin right off of the rabbit or right off of the whatever. Okay, so I've got, and as you can see, all the vegetation is falling down here. Um, and it just keeps going and going and going. Now, do I do it this way? I don't. Okay, now this is perfect. It's like roving. It's going to give you a little fingering weight. Oh, got a little thing there. All you do is just take your finger. Out. See how it didn't fuzz out? It's just all glumped together. Just, yep, there we go. And that baby is gone. And off we go to the next one. So this is usable fiber from raw to spinnable right there in minutes. And guys, 
I know the camera doesn't do this justice, but all the stuff, I'm trying to see if I can get it. I don't know that you can see it on camera. All the vegetation matter has come out. And I literally have just picked this with my fingers. Right there is a little second cut. Now, is that good or bad? We'll have that discussion here in a little bit. But this right here is spinnable fiber and it is super soft, okay? Um, by the way, she's RJ's favorite, not mine. Little wild thing. And it, <laughs> it has nothing to do with her fleece. But look at that, that is a thin roving, ready to spin. You can buy raw wool by the ounce. You can buy um, processed wool by the ounce, but you will see a big cut in the price, okay? We sell our raw for 25 to 50 cents an ounce, whereas an ounce of processed, really nice fiber, blah, 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 can cost you anywhere from 350 up, okay? So it is not hard to process wool. I just showed you, I now have a spinnable fiber from, I don't know, it's not even an ounce really. It's just a little <laughs> pull off. Here's tag in there, the nasty. All right, now, there are some drawbacks to doing it this way, and there are some bonuses. The first and foremost, and I have people request that I spin like this, and by the way, this is called spinning in the grease, okay? Because you haven't washed it, you haven't done anything with it. Spinning in the grease up north um, is pretty common for one simple fact. When you spin this like this, lanolin is going to get trapped in there. And that lanolin is going to act like another layer of water repellent. Um, lanolin repels water. That's why sheep don't really get soaked out in the rain. And then when you apply it back on itself, it's going to lock even more lanolin in there. Does it affect anything? Nope, because you're going to wash it. So, yes, some of the lanolin gets locked in there, but the dirt doesn't. Just saying. So it adds a layer of that waterproofing to whatever project you're doing. It doesn't hurt the fiber, doesn't hurt what you're doing, has nothing to do with anything other than there is a little lanolin locked in it, and lanolin repels water. So, now, the downside. My hands. Um, I did that over the edge of the table that I staged my computer on for the simple fact that I don't want to, have to sweep the whole floor. But if you have a front porch and you're outside doing it, all the vegetation falls to the floor, okay? It, you can get really dirty fleece and do that, you know, and I'm telling you, it's not, it's not that hard to just start anywhere and you're lining up the fibers as you go. So I've had people say, oh, but you're not lining up the fiber. Yes, I am. Okay. All those fibers now point in that direction. And all of them are spinnable. So there are a couple of downfalls. Okay. So first you have to know the quality of what you're getting. Free wool is free wool. I'm going to say that first off. Because you can make something out of any wool that's thrown away. I don't care if it's full of second cuts. I don't care if it's full of vegetation. You can make something, whether you end up felting with it. Um, and this right here, perfect for felting. You can just and crisscross it so that the fibers lock together. You do not have to process wool to have it felt. Um, I know people are going to tell me that I'm wrong with that. Try it. You can felt it and then when you do your wash and that, it tightens right up. Okay, so you can do needle felting. I've only done needle felting, but you can make something with it and then when you wash it, it felts. So let's talk about one of the other upsides, time saving. We all want gratification. Now the question is, do you want instant gratification or long-term gratification. Um, if you're one of those that is proud of every step, 
and has all the time in the world, go for it. I don't. And I get impatient. Okay, I like instant gratification. So one of the things when you talk to some of them, they'll say, well, first you uh, skirt your fleece, which most do when they put them in bags anyway. If you're getting it from a meat producer, they probably haven't skirted it and you want to take the, that just means taking the poop and the stuff off the edge where the belly is and you know their privates are and take all that off. You don't want any of that, throw it away. Um, then they tumble it, then they wash it, then they dry it, then they put it through the picker, then they process it with whatever they're gonna process it, whether it be combs or drum carter or hackles or whatever. Then they spin it, then they soak it to set the twist, then they dry it, then they dye it, then they dry it, then they use it. I don't do. When I am doing big bulks, big commercial, gotta be perfect, yeah, I kind of sort of follow that regimen, but I take a couple of regimens out for me personally. I'm going to make this statement. I'm probably going to get griped at. Everybody just questions it. You can post your questions in the, the thread below and I will comment as best I can. The same water that washes your, your yarn, okay, because you're going to wash your yarn, right? is the same water that will set your twist and once you rinse that so you're gonna make your you know do this process make it into yarn right you spin it it's gonna apply it whatever you're gonna do to it after just picking it with your fingers then you're gonna go in you're gonna wash your yarn then you're gonna rinse your yarn from right there it does not have to dry guys it, it's not you can go right to the dye pot with that baby once it goes to the dye pot then you want to do whatever your dye say, you know, if you use an acid base, I use um, Greener Shades, which is all organic. It's awesome. If you want some, let me know, but pretty much just Google Greener Shades dyes. They're a low temp dye. Um, it's amazing. So I dye it right from there. So I, I wash, rinse, and dye. I don't dry in between. Oh, there's a get. That's going to get me in trouble, isn't it? So once I dye it, then I dry it. Why should I have to spin it, set the twist, wait for it to dry, which takes a good day or so. Then I'm going to wash it or whatever. Or even if you wash the fleece first, think about it that way. If you're washing the fleece first, then you have to let the fleece dry. No, cut all that out. Process it with your fingers, make your yarn, then when you wash it, you rinse it, you dye it, just boom, 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 all set. Then you only have one day or two days, and depending on your where you dry it and all that stuff, you just have the yarn drying, and then it's ready to use. Yep, I said it. <laughs> you can cut out all that, process it with your fingers, spin it on your wheel or your drop spindle, then you wash the yarn, which sets the twist, rinse it, and go right into the dye pot with it. Hmm. That just shortens your process by days. And you have a usable project, and you don't have any money in it. So what do I wash with? Dawn dish soap. Just saying. It is what it is. You probably already have some under your sink because it takes grease out of the way. Um, yeah. So, um, that is pretty much my demonstration, my presentation, and what I do. At this point, I would open the floor to questions. I don't know how to do that. Really haven't thought of an ending for this video, but we're winging it. So, um, just remember that there really are no rules. People will tell you the standard and say, well, this is what I do, but you know, there's no rules. There really aren't any rules. Um, people didn't have a ton of time in the old days and they didn't have the space to dry the same yarn three times or dry the fleece. And then when you see, and, and there's one person that always brings this up, 
You see the picture of the old days with big cauldrons, okay, and they're boiling their wool and washing. Wrong. It's a misconception. First off, according to my grandma, the only time and now my grandma lived to be 94 years old, okay? She lived through the depression. She lived through all that stuff. The only time her mother ever boiled wool was to obtain the lanolin. It ruined the wool, so they didn't do it very often. But because of the weather and all that stuff, they, they needed the lanolin for hands. And, and they made their own soaps and that. And they needed it to go in there. But it does ruin the wool. So... Um, and by the, she says ruin, but I just don't think that you, I think you could felt with it. Just saying, I never questioned my grandma. My grandma is God's word for my, <laughs> in my world anyway, never questioned. I don't know why you couldn't felt with it after that. But anyway, um, but she says the big cauldrons that you see, they weren't washing the wool. They were, uh, boiling it out for lanolin for their hands in the winter and their soaps and that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, the pictures that you see of the ladies sitting outside with their wheels, that's because all the vegetation was falling down outside in the, on the ground and they had the big bags and those were just sheared right off. They picked it out with their fingers or sometimes a comb and spun it. And then they did whatever. A lot of times they didn't dye it in the old days. Um, grandma says that's a, a modern thing, but as far as I'm concerned, it's a really simple process and I want you to think of the dollar amount. Um, you don't have to do hundreds of dollars and invest in a hundred dollar set of combs, hundred dollar set of hand carters, four hundred dollar drum carter, dry racks, tumblers, pickers. You have them all right here, okay? Fiber shouldn't be a rich people's or an expensive hobby. It should be something that's done for fun. So, and of course, I want everybody to get into it. We teach these classes at the farm, and we love the fact that people figure out that, what is it, when they said from, from trash to treasure, she says this is like the ultimate trash to treasure. When purchasing a fleece, I want to be upfront and honest with you. I haven't purchased a fleece in a long time, but that's because I have a whole room full of them. So, you will come across fleeces that have lots of second cuts. They are still quality fleeces, but you can either pick out those second cuts, which if they have a lot, you're gonna, I don't want to pick them all out. Think of the end product you're trying to make before you say that's not a quality fleece. Because for you, it might not be a quality fleece, but for your teenager who wants the newest thick and thin with the little bobbles on it, those second cuts go right up in it and make all kinds of bubbly, bumpy, textured yarn. You can ply as many plies as you want with the bumpy yarn, you know, with all those bobbles in it. It doesn't have to be your standard of quality and yet I'm not saying this right but it's still quality even though it's not quality for you so what I would say is a lot of places do sell raw wool by the ounce by the pound um, find your local farmer that shears and burns the wool by the way, don't throw away those tags that I talked about when you're skirting it. And I said, take off the under part and around the privates and stuff. Put that around your trees because when it rains, it acts like a natural mulch. Um, so put it around your trees. And, and we put in trees probably, RJ was six. He's 24 now. So, ooh, 18 years ago. And I have never watered the trees, even in the Oklahoma droughts. Never watered them. So... Um, don't ever throw away wool. There's always something to do with, with a part of it. Um, everything is usable and it is not, I'm going to say that again, it is not an expensive hobby. Um, there are ways to process that just, and do what works for you. You don't have to buy a bunch of stuff. If picking this with your fingers, if you just have one of these and you want to brush this out, um, grab you a piece. And you can tell I pulled that out and it's 
already kind of just pull it across there and ta-da there you go usable fiber okay so if this style is your style um, just get your hands in it that's the thing use your hands get your hands in it and your hands are all the tools that you need and again here is this little piece that I just played with and I put on this little comb here and honestly guys doesn't look much different so uh, yeah just get in there have fun I'm sorry that this is a virtual thing but um, it's the best we can do under the circumstances if you guys have any questions post them in the thread below and I will start to answer them as I see them please remember that um, RJ is at finals and so depending on when I post this as to where I'll be I will answer them as quickly as I can you also can get a hold of me through our email um, huh, forget email just I'm gonna put my phone number up there it's my work number and it's a farm number if you have any serious questions or just need to talk to me about this it is 918-640-4012 you can give us a call and I will walk you through it um, I do have a job so um, just give me time that weekend I should be available to take calls and talk but if you get a busy signal or a voicemail leave me a message I will call you back okay um, but the easiest way probably is going to be to post questions in the thread below and I'll continue to answer those throughout the day okay um, save this listing this video will not go away it is a private listing so if you save the link write it down whatever you need to do you can always get back to it okay um, I think that's it wish we all could have met in person but yeah it's not gonna happen so this is the best thing we've got you guys happy spinning happy fibering get out there find you some wool just start pulling it with your hands and spinning that bad boy and lo and behold you're in fiber heaven right so I will talk to you next year or if anybody is up for it give me a buzz and maybe we can get together if you're in the um, around the Tulsa area uh, Coffeeville Kansas area any of that is kind of like my radius so give me a holler we'll get together have a cup of coffee and talk spinning crocheting um, check out the website for our Tunisian class and I will see you I guess on the flip side bye